Hey, what's going on, crew? Welcome to another episode of the Feed Me, Feel Me podcast. There's and Jeff coming at you from the CrossFit Games. With uh, We have the honor of uh, having Dr. Kara Miller, Logan's developmental coach. Uh, we met her at the Hold the Standards Summit. And um, I'll let you dive into your your journey in academia and everything and how you got to this point with Logan here in a second. But, you know, the, the reason that you're sitting here with us today, um, you went through an exercise during the summit with Logan that I've not experienced in any seminar that I've been in at any point to date. And the, the vulnerability that you were able to draw out of him or allow him to exhibit uh, was extremely powerful to me. And in that exchange, as I was explaining to you uh, a couple of days ago, there is an empathy about you uh, as you were having that, that exchange with Logan it was interesting to to witness you feeling what he felt in that moment and to witness that 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 phys- the physical manifestation of that uh was something that just really drew me into the experience and as i you know kind of teed up for you the other day I don't know if that's natural for you if that's something that you've become aware of and you actively practice or like where that sits with you and I kind of want to draw that out uh, as we go on with this conversation but for everybody who doesn't know who you are and Mm -hmm. and what you do we just went through the the stereo the perception versus the reality of what you do as a developmental coach walk us through your 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 journey to this point Thank you for having me. I think that's what you're supposed to say, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not. Thanks, you guys. It's really good to be here. I mean, if you were waiting in the audience for us, I, these guys are going to come get me. So. <laughs> yeah. We got the formalities out of the way. <laughs> yeah. I'll say, what, I'll say what's on script because the rest of the time I'm off script. <laughs> um, no, but I am. I am pleased because I think this is the place where I want to live. I want to live in this, like, other quality other texture of experience, other state, you know, non-ordinary state of relationships and of learning and of, you know, thinking and being. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so you want to know sort of how I've come up? Yeah. How'd you you get here? So um, let me think for a second how I want to frame this. I mean, my education is usually the first thing that people experience about me, Mm -hmm. and um, and that's okay, because I am a learner, and I love that role. So my learning began early. Uh, My most significant learning experience was uh, a worldview class, if you can believe that, Mm -hmm. in my high school. Um, We basically got the first chance ever you know, in my adolescent life to ever realize that I had a thing that I saw the world through Mm -hmm. and that other people had a thing that they saw the world through and they were not the same thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, Even if they seemed like they were the same thing, the same affiliation or uh, had the same title. So that was a big revelation for me to realize that the way that I saw the world was mine and uh, that I had the opportunity to deconstruct it, mm. to you know, take a look at it, um, and that sometimes like it had me, and other times like I was able to have it. Sure. And so that was a significant learning experience for me. Um, when I went to college, I had some. I went to UC Santa Barbara, and uh, like you know, all the jokes aside, like my academic experience there was really significant. And the reason it was is because it was such a big school. There's like so many things going on that I started relationships with a few professors, and I started to realize how much of a like golden opportunity that is. Mm. How much they're available actually. 
my number one piece of advice for students going into college or going to universities is seek out relationships with your professors. They're passionate about learning. They're passionate about students. Some are, some are assholes. <laughs> 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 you'll see them. You'll know them when you see them. Just not them. Um, but find those people because yeah. they're going to be a significant part of shaping you as a learner, which is going to serve you your whole life. If you can stay curious, if you can trust yourself to know and discern and create for yourself the way that you see the world. Um, and so a few of those people were significant for me and they made me appreciate myself as a learner and, um, and also trusted me to interpret information for myself. And so that was an exciting experience for me. I knew I wanted to do more of that. Um, I also had a significant spiritual journey growing up. Um, my family uh, was always in church, and my mom is a pastor. Uh, she's been a pastor for 20 years. And so, like, that did a lot of things for um, both my perception of, like, gender and authority, mm -hmm. um, as well as my, um, you know, understanding of, like, what it is to walk a spiritual way. Um, so, you know, through growing up years and then also in college, um, I was, you know, seeking and pursuing sp a spiritual life, and um, and it was it was at the end of college that I realized that like you could go somewhere where there was academics going on and also this like spiritual journey, mm -hmm. where you could ask like really big ontological questions of like so what does it all mean? Like we got all this learning, like and then what does that mean? And then we get like this whole bunch more learning and challenge it and like bat it around and then like how does it come to ground mm -hmm. and um and that calls into question all kinds of like very interesting pursuits of like sustainability and the environment uh and how we take care of the, the you know gifts of creation that we've you know been given or that we've part we're participating in every minute um and what it brought me to was the decision to go to seminary at princeton and that was like a huge reach for me as a learner. I was not like a perfect student. Mm. And I came from a university that was kind of, you know, non Ivy League. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was a really big reach for me. But, um, but I figured out a way to like get in there and mm. also start to create <coughs> some relationships with professors there who could help me hold these two things together. And that would determine a lot of the shape of who I've become as a professional. Um, and how I survive, like, in the type of roles that I end up taking on. So it started to build the idea that, uh, that spirituality is a practice and that it's something that I can do with my body uh, and with my imagination and with my creativity and my art and also with my academics mm -hmm. so that my academics could serve my spiritual search for meaning um, and that that spiritual search for meaning would would filter and make more meaningful my academic pursuits. Um, so seminary, uh, knowing I wanted to do more academics, I did a PhD. Um, and that PhD sort of like was the door opener for a lot of things for me. Um, you know, don't call me if you have a heart attack, but like, being Dr. Miller like gets you a thing in mm. our in our society, mm -hmm. and so um, so having that thing has like walked me into some really cool places where I could have an influence. I could give an offering, bring a different type of gift to a setting where it wouldn't usually get brought. Um, along the way, I've had some incredible students. So students that would start to seek me out in the way that I sought my professors out. Um, and Logan would, would sort of top that list of like a student who was so hungry to learn, to pursue the meaningful life, uh, that was rigorous and it's intellectual and it's meaningful and it's on the ground and, uh, it's based in relationships that last over time. Um, and so my relationship with him as a learner first and now like as a like co-learner, um, has walked me into some interesting places that like we might not have expected yeah. me to be. And uh, the Hold the Standard Summit is one of those places where we're in a CrossFit gym and I'm sitting on a CrossFit box and I'm 
being me and I'm offering my gifts and we're translating together the ways that we enhance or illuminate the learning that each of us have, the expertise that each of us have, and how we not only meet each other in really meaningful ways in order to bring out that like offering or really like be our fullest selves, mm -hmm. but that we start to turn around, turn outward and start to offer that experience to other people, invite other people to that experience. And so, um, you know, as we get into it, you know, one of my questions would be, you know, from what you were observing, like, you know, what was the experience that you were having? Like you're sure. seeing Logan have an experience mm -hmm. and you're seeing me, you know, in practice. Yeah. Right? And you recognize there's like some space between us mm -hmm. where something's going on. Right. And, and it's very like organic. It's very raw. It's like, it's not a, it's not a framework only because something else is going on there. Sure. And, um, and so I'm very interested in that experience yeah. because I think it is a part of sort of like what I've come up to do mm -hmm. is to curate more and more opportunities to, you know, have people experience that because yeah. it's been the most meaningful thing in my life. Sure. Um, and also to really learn about what's happening yeah. and how do we curate places right. where that occurs because God knows we need like more meaningful relationships with like our environment mm -hmm. and like our society and like together. Right. So um, if this, if this is an offering uh, towards that, then that's what I'm about. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, do you want me to answer that question? <laughs> yes. Do you want to? No, okay, absolutely. Yes. No, for sure. I mean, you it was a teaser, like it was no, a little bit of a teaser. You're <laughs> like, and I felt something next. No, no, no. <laughs> yes. so, um, uh, we can't ask the listeners if they want to hear, but so, I think they want to hear. So <laughs> I'm going, I'm going to blow it out of the water because I don't know how to yes. adequately explain the construct of the exercise. So yeah. we'll break the fourth wall. Okay. Yes. And yeah. you jump in where I fuck okay, it up. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Great. <clears throat> So, uh, can we just do this in real time? You want to do this in real time? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, uh, the, <laughs> as the exercise goes, what, yes. w what we want to get out of it is we want to identify the, the limiting belief, the, yes. the, the monologue that we have with ourselves about <clears throat> why we can't elevate past level three to get to level four. You yes. can't achieve the thing you want to achieve because you. Correct. Because you believe something that's actually not true. Sure. Yes. So uh, as we go through this exercise, you start with um, the thing that you cannot do, right? The, the, the hurdle that you just can't get over. We identify that thing, right? <coughs> uh, as we go through this exercise, uh, in, the, in that first step, I identified that uh, I cannot grow or choose not to grow because I feel so fucking guilty about the growth right um, so that that's where we start and then step we'll, we'll stare step the thing so what's step two well I think I edited your step one which was like you know what you can't do right but what is it that you want to do ah yes I want to grow yes sans the guilt yes there we go and I think there was a piece of it that was, I want to grow and not leave others behind. Yes. Yes. Oh, your memory so on point. You deal with so many people. This is great. <laughs> um, <laughs> because so that's actually like, that's the juice of the thing. Right. 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 And like with your background, like leaving people behind is like mm -hmm. a thing, right? Like right. you don't do that. Mm -hmm. So you could understand why like there's like a huge like, consequence to that sure. of you going out and getting the thing or going out and achieving the thing and getting the victory mm -hmm. and leaving people behind. Right. Right. Like right. you have an inherent judgment about that. Mm -hmm. That's probably more than institutional. Okay. Like, right. You're probably representing more than your institution you right. know, that you've represented before. And so, yeah, the second step is like, so what is it that you do, mm -hmm. you know, to, in order to like achieve, but also not exclude others, you know, right. achieve it only like, you know, yeah. okay, I've got small victory or like, what mm -hmm. is it that you do to minimize right. the, 
the perception that you're victorious and you love, haven't mm-hmm. brought people with you. Right. Or that now you're distanced yeah. or something. Yeah, I wrote a bunch of garbage down, but now that I'm okay, able yeah. to like, <laughs> s- <laughs> Good. S- 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 succinctly yes. uh-huh. articulate it, um, you know, that the, the things that I do to negate what I want or mm-hmm. impede it, um, you know, I, I waste a lot of time and I, I delegate incorrectly. Um, and with which uh, that affords me the opportunity to tolerate a lot of things that I inherently would not tolerate. So that those are the things that I do that stunt the growth so that in my mind, the narrative goes, in doing so, I'm allowing people the opportunity to catch up, mm-hmm. right? So that we can continue this thing together. Yeah. So one of the questions, you know, that immediately comes to mind is like, are people, you know, saying to you, wait, wait, don't grow. Keep, let us keep up. Like, are they doing no. that? Or are they saying, dude, go, grow, go do the thing. Like you have potential, you know, like yeah. we want to see you sure. achieve, def- bring I it back here. Like mm-hmm. take a, you know, like are right. they doing that or are they like, don't go, yeah. don't do it. No, I, I, I definitely hear more of the latter than I've ever heard the former. Um, and a matter of fact, the last, uh, when I sat down and I had that, that objective heart to heart with my staff and it was like, yeah. if there's anything that I can fix in the here and now to, adjust the course of this organization in a positive direction yeah. what would it be and uh the the answer i found very ironic was you go to all this shit you meet uh-huh. all these cool people yeah we'd like to know when you go right <clears throat> and what are you preventing from happen what are you protecting for by not doing that i didn't realize that I, it it was one of those things that I didn't, I didn't even want, I, this shit's not a want. Uh, I didn't realize I wasn't doing, you know, because it's of such genuine interest to me. I just do, you know, there, there's no exclusion or failure to invite in my mind. It's, you know, as I paint my picture, it's like, this is, there is nobody above me, right? So th- these are the things that I have to do to continue my growth Mm -hmm. at no point that I take into consideration that they might be interested in that same process. So it was more. One, so two things exist, which are like opposing each other, which Mm -hmm. is crazy, but like, we've all got this, right? Like Mm -hmm. next podcast is me doing mine. Okay. okay. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to do yours, you know, like we're going to do yours, whatever. Um, The, and the, and the two things that are opposed are what you really want is, to not selfishly grow, but mm-hmm. to grow in a way that brings others along and like doesn't create distance right. between your learning and the people that you care about or that you feel responsible to lead or sure. who you want to influence. And that what you actually are doing is like being awfully selfish by mm-hmm. just being like, oh, I'll just go do my thing. I don't want to bother you guys. You know, like this is, or like, this is my thing to do. Yeah. Right. And my thing. And so, you know, I am exaggerating it, mm-hmm. but like, this is pretty typical. Like this is the pattern and the problem, right? Which is the th- the very thing that we really want to be. Mm-hmm. Like our pursuit of it, like is the thing we don't want to be. Like it's a, a, such a bummer, right? Yeah. So um, so like the what's the worry? You know, if you actually go get the thing and bring others along, right? Right. That's the place where I, I was saying before you know like started to get kind of yucky mm-hmm. like you don't want to stand up and be like if I go to a seminar and I bring other people like we all might shine or we like I won't get to bring something back or mm-hmm. I won't feel like the victory was mine or like you know there's yeah. like there's usually some sort of kind of story in there sure. that's driving things right did you find a story like that oh yeah yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, so I'm not gonna fill it in anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you really, you fill in the story. Yeah. So I mean, the 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 narrative as it goes in my mind is um uh is is the the relinquishing of control, right? Yes. So if I 
give all of that that power to my coaches and my organization yes. to to do what they need to do for it to thrive it will it will no longer be mine right i will uh as a byproduct of this giving i will be forgotten as i pursue this other thing and having you know in the context of the building of crossfit phx like that was such such a monumental accomplishment in my life to i don't know if it's a subconscious recognition thing but like fuck i put so much yeah. work into that yep. and to not be attached to it anymore the yeah. fear of not being attached to it yes uh is devastating to me yeah right even though it's thriving and yes you know i'm the founder of it and blah 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 like all those things are still true yes but in the day to day, you know, not being there, you know, not having, not being required to be there and it's still doing its thing, yeah. you know, like as awesome as that is. And as much as all of us entrepreneurs talk about yes. autopilot and residual income and blah, blah, delegate. blah, I want to build it to oh, sell it yeah. and all these things. Right? right. What's the reality? It's fucking terrifying. Yeah. Right. <coughs> and uh, to the extent that when I take on something that could truly be fruitful yeah. right there is proof of concept there writing a book or whatever either it doesn't get done or it gets done extremely half-assed like the book yeah. i have out there right yes. now quite honestly i think is a piece of shit and i can't wait to rewrite it okay um but it's because i didn't want to leave the thing yes to do the thing yes you know so that that that's where that narrative goes yes yeah and like that yucky narrative like, I mean, can you find the place where, like, that's pretty yucky? Like, you awful. don't want to stand up and be like, I'd like to say how I've gotten here. I can't it's believe I just I fucking said that. <laughs> I know. So, like, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I feel real <laughs> shitty right now. So so this podcast not getting published? Or, like, <laughs> oh, no, what? this is happening. This is Let's get some cheese curds. Because, <laughs> like, this, we're good, right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. We're here now. I need you to pull me out of this hole. We're going to finish this exercise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what's going to pull you out of this exercise is your dissatisfaction. Mm hmm with the, your internal chatter. Yeah. So athletes are really good about talking about internal chatter, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's a batter's box or it's a boxing ring or it's a cross country run, yeah. whatever the thing is, yoga, mm -hmm. you know, all of it addresses this reality that we have this running transcript going inside of our minds. Yeah. And until somebody really steps in there to try to say, hold on, let me just ch -ch 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 roll that back and read it back to you. Let me just read back to you what you just told yourself. Mm -hmm. You told yourself that this thing is true. Yeah. And now you're making decisions off of this truth. Mm -hmm. Like when I show it to you, like, is that true? Right. No. Like it's not true, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that thing that's not true is that like if you – lead if you you know accomplish something if you get bigger yeah if you take up more space if you create independence where there may be like close dependence if you create those things that you will be forgotten or that you are forgettable sure nobody wants to be forgettable right but like for whatever reason for you like that's the thing that feels the scariest. Mm -hmm. So figuring out like, I don't want to live my life like on, you know, protecting myself from being forgotten. Right. Yeah. Like, because <coughs> guess what? You're going to do that and you're going to spend all your energy on that mm -hmm. instead of doing things that are memorable, like doing things that are b worth being remembered for. Right. So how do you cut the tank on, I don't want to be forgotten. I don't want to be forgotten. I don't want to be forgotten. I got to keep this, all this shit, all these plates and spinning and whatever and turn around and be like, I'm going to figure out how to create something memorable. Mm -hmm. um, that's the like turn and dissatisfaction and internal chatter. All that kind of stuff is what drives that thing. Right. The other thing that makes that possible is the thing you were talking to me about earlier. I think was my like ticket to this conversation, which was this quality of like a companion or a coach or whatever. Sometimes that's an overused term, especially in your industry, right? Sure. 
Um, but it's basically somebody to say, full stop, what's the container you need to unpack this stuff that's not true anymore? Mm -hmm. and like, what's the grief that we need to acknowledge? Or what's the potential that we n need to give you a taste of so that you're willing to make the turn or make the change? And right. I'm right here. I'm going to stay right here. Mm -hmm. um, we sometimes talk about it as a mirror. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm going to stay here with the mirror and it's an uncomfortable, you know, situation to look at yourself and to look at what you believe and be unsatisfied, be really dissatisfied with it. Sure. Not to judge it mm -hmm. because it built who you are. It got you here. Right. But like it's too small to get you somewhere memorable. Sure. So how do you give yourself some more space, grow into it so that you can actually claim your spot, claim your gift, claim your offering, mm -hmm. not in an egotistical way. Like I know I'm here. I know mm. I've got something to be, you know, but where like, it really is like, it's like life force that springs from you. Like I'm in pursuit of the thing I was brought here, brought up to be, and I'm not afraid to be that. Yeah. And I don't need to, have that be better than anybody else's mm -hmm. probably not going to look like anybody else's um that takes real courage and you know i i do that like i am doing that i am finding the courage to say what i do doesn't look like what other people do right. and this is what i was given breath to do mm -hmm. and this should influence my parenting and this should influence my friendships this should so it's not just in my coaching and I have this sort of false self where I show up this way and like, you know, but it's like, no, this comes up through me and out of me and yeah. it creates a quality of something that enables the person to halt the internal chatter, pay attention to their body because all kinds of stuff happens in your body. You know, like, I mean, this would be interesting to hear you guys talk about too. It's like, mm what was your like visceral or physical experience mm. of this kind of work and yeah. because you're really focused on movement right 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 um and so what's the embodied piece of this because sure. it's very intellectual yeah sometimes it's really emotional mm. um but there's a physical aspect sure. to it too and mm. so you know like your physical like take a look at how he's sitting right now Mm. Like, what do you notice? Closed off. For sure. Mm -hmm. Like, he just, like, went, sm like... Like the fence. Pulled in, totally. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's, like, something so worth paying attention to. It's yeah. like, we're somewhere mm -hmm. where, like, that is, you know, a real... Like, you're showing yourself something. It's, like, sure. worth paying attention to, like, what's my body doing mm -hmm. right, right now? Um, and how do I pay attention to it, honor it, address it? Just put it in the thing and like mm. mix it in you know right, it's right, like right. it's not there's not a judgment of it mm -hmm. it's useful to me like my body's telling me something my brain's telling me something like sometimes my like my eyes get wet and that tells mm -hmm. me something mm -hmm. and you know like i think that's where like you called it empathy i think mm -hmm. and if that's what it is then it's a very rich piece of like being a human mm -hmm. and um and i do want to represent that in the world sure yeah i'd say you're really good at it <laughs> so <laughs> you're you're living it yeah score <laughs> 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 that's okay i have other trigger points i'm in the airplane and somebody's like shoving their bag yeah. into the overhead bin <laughs> and we're all like it won't it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this thing, and you're like, I'm not gonna go. <laughs> non empathy, right. like right. whole thing. Right. They're not like, wow, you over there, you're like a Jedi. That's awesome. Thanks for that. You know, I'm like, no. <laughs> and you know, I don't want to diverge yeah. from that conversation no, that you both are, like, that you are having with that yeah. that experience. You know, but one question I do have, and we picked it up with Logan when mm -hmm. he was talking about the independent study that he did with you. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned that, you know, they created this beautiful learning center at this, at San Diego. Yeah. And he didn't have the opportunity to, to partake in the classes that you were offering because he had such a heavy schedule with yes. his baseball and it was interfering. 
and he mentioned it to you know the powers to be that can you guys work around my schedule do you know make it fit for me yes and then he ended up going to you in your office and you just said simply give me your information and I'll let you know and I'll contact you Mm -hmm. and he said he didn't know what went on in that time period but he expressed that you did you jumped through hoops for him and I sort of want to know what exactly that you do and where did that come from for you know Mm -hmm. where you're sitting to have that level of compassion for somebody and to sort of put your neck out there on the line to make this available to a to a man like that and change his life essentially and just call to question the powers to be and say like if we're going to create something that's here to help people why are you taking away from them so i want to hear your side on like exactly what you went through in that process of when he came to you and everything you had to do on the back end to make that happen This is a good question. I mean, it it takes me to, like, an issue that people don't often talk about, uh, but it's so present for all of us, and that is power. And that my personal belief about power is, you know, the ability to make something happen or, like, to influence an outcome, and that that should be used, like, really well. Mm Mm-hmm. And that that should be really like very well checked, um, and that that's an honor to have power. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, in that situation, I recognized that like when he comes in my office, I knew that like I had power that he did not have, mm-hmm. right? Um, and his passion was coming up against his low power, right? And I was suspicious also that there was being there was power being exerted against him because of his stereotype because he showed up as a student athlete and uh so you know there was a bit of a, like an injustice there and so uh part of my values would be to figure out like what do i have to influence this situation not to fix it not to solve it not to be heroic or whatever, but that like my power should be in service of something exactly like this Mm -hmm. because my power is not given to me or earned or however it is, um, you know, however I end up with it, what is it good for? What's it on behalf of? What is it for the sake of? And at that point in my professional journey or in my career, I was really feeling the oppression of learners of people who are pursuing sort of higher consciousness or breaking boundaries or trying to understand the system and their place in it. And so, you know, I felt like my students were oppressed. And so I was really ready to advocate for them and to use my power on their behalf. Now, it wasn't just power on behalf of like any athlete, right? And it wasn't because Logan was like, an awesome baseball player, right? Like I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. All I knew is he was a student athlete. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, his desire or his pursuit for learning triggered in me, like I only figured out later as I started to unpack it, my own feelings of wanting to liberate myself from the oppression of having been a learner coming up in that type of a system. Mm -hmm that said, you know, you can only do this, you can only think that, right? There are limits to what you can challenge or not, how much power you are permitted to have, and that I, you know, internalized a lot of that. And so it was my desire that my students get liberated from that oppression. Mm -hmm. And that translated into student athletes too, that they were specifically oppressed, you know, Mm -hmm. in, in, in that system, in that power dynamic. And so, So I would say it was gratifying to me to know that I knew what my power was on behalf of. Mm -hmm. At that moment, it was on behalf of students because they were, you know, like my people. And and I invited them to study with me and I invited them to write with me. And I invited like my dissertation started out as like an economic theory, rational choice thing. (laughs) And and it became through my teaching experiences and experiences like this, how Mm -hmm. meaningful that was to me to give my influence and like watch it do something Mm -hmm. real Mm -hmm. um you know my dissertation became how to create a community that everyone's bought in and everyone has a say and um and so 
So I think there was some, there's something about that, about using power well, mm. uh, that inspired me about that opportunity. It felt like it was being given to me, like, here's your opportunity to use your power on behalf of someone who, you know, doesn't have the power to move. And, um, and I was going to get, you know, just to be totally frank, like, I was going to get nothing for it. Like, my colleagues were like, why would you do that? Like, I didn't get paid to do that. I didn't get recognition to do that. Nobody knew that I was doing that. Like, I got nothing to do for that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but in reality, like, I got everything I wanted, right? Mm -hmm. I got the opportunity to get really up close to a learner or someone who was going to experience liberation from oppression, go learn. Mm -hmm. And I got to be the companion. So I think that was the beginning of me, you know, thinking to myself, like, this role is cool. And that, like, I'm going to, you know, be up behind them or right underneath them while they experience, you know, a bigger self and, um, and that the relationship that we're curating in this thing, mm -hmm. um, you know, that my vulnerable power, that's sort of the kind of power I think I was using with him, mm -hmm. my vulnerable power to say, yeah, like I'll enter into this with you, uh, because I see you in pursuit of something that I'm also in pursuit of. Um, and there were people who removed my obstacles and I want to be an obstacle remover too. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's even a thing, whatever. I want to remove obstacles. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and, and the gift that I got back from it was a, a quality of relationship or a texture of relationship mm -hmm. that felt very, very real. Yeah. Mm. And I've been in pursuit of that ever since. Mm. Um, the, the fact that that exact relationship now has sustained over 10 years and changed over time yeah. um, is like exponentially more meaningful mm -hmm. um, because it's pushed my edges and it's pushed his edges. And, um, and so now my clients, I think, um, would all report some version of this, giving them the opportunity to create a place where they can become a bigger version of themselves, yeah. where they can sort of take up power, take up, you know, their own ability to liberate themselves mm -hmm. from some of the socialized oppression yeah. that we have to, in, to tune in to where they're at and that, um, and that that's meaningful to them too. Sure. Mm -hmm. And starting to break it down into like, so what are the practices that support this? Mm -hmm. You know, like we got a lot of psychological theories. We got a lot of all that kind of stuff, you know, but it mm -hmm. sits in journals Right. And it's in classrooms that people are not privy yeah. to. And so, you know, how do we step outside of that? Sure. Like get onto the street and mm -hmm. like live our lives, you know, because right. I have children and I have neighbors. And so, you know, I don't only get to do this, you know, in some special office somewhere and then come out into the real world. It's yeah. like this has to ca count in the real world mm -hmm. if it's going to count for anything. Right. Um, and so, you know, I, I sit with my clients all the time and say, what are we for the sake of? Mm -hmm. Like things are going to get better for you and this is going to push me as a practitioner and we're learning more about what works and how this is and what the, you know, what this is. But who are we sharing this with? Who are we open to? Who mm -hmm. can get in here if this is a good thing? Right. And I don't totally know the answer to that right. question. Mm -hmm. Hold the standard summit is one way right. to expose that to others. Um, talking to you guys, you know, yeah. um, but the mechanics of how I made that independent study happen, mm -hmm. that feels more like a bootstrap it, <laughs> do this <laughs> thing over here, <laughs> like, let's do it, you know, jury rig the thing or mm -hmm. whatever. And like, come on, you owe me a favor. And like, I think this is kind of interesting. Plus he agreed to bring me burritos, like, <laughs> 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 so whatever, you know, and like that, that it was more like that behind yeah. the scenes, mm -hmm. but like, I'm going to I'm giving you the like more meaningful version yeah. that over time, that's what's changed for me Yeah, and that I, how I understand power. Sure. I think power isn't something that gets talked about sure. as freely as that or vulnerably as that, yeah. mm -hmm. but it's really meaningful if you can go there. Yeah. Well, it's really interesting, you know, we were talking offline uh, before we got on the mic about just the, the institution of academia, mm -hmm. you know, and especially in, in your field, I feel like this has a lot of context in terms of increasing the consciousness of society, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, for as much as 
the institution of school is so information driven they're not very excited about sharing the information right and that just kind of brings us full circle to the conversation that we're having now in that we have this kind of dialogue mm -hmm. in our circles all the fucking time right and then when that circle breaks now we have to we're under the gun to deem others who don't run in these circles as worthy of the introduction to this school of thought, this way of thinking, this circle of people, right? And we find it extremely unfair that access mm -hmm. to this way of thinking, you know, yeah. uh, this, this circle of people as exclusive as it is, mm -hmm. that it has to be that way. So ha just having somebody like yourself on this show, engaging in this dialogue, it, you know, uh, acknowledging it for what it is, is extremely powerful. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, you, you are kind of breaking the system in, uh, in your own way through your practice to take everything that you've attained through academia mm -hmm. and increasing the consciousness of society through your clients in how you coach them so that that's amazing thank you and um and i can like throw it back to you guys too and that is like you have the power to do something like that right like you can either have the privilege of running in the circles and meeting people like logan and talking with me or whatever um but like this is your power to give it that away, you know, or to give access to it. So, you know, my yes to this podcast is like, you know, I didn't even get a burrito out of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's coming okay. after. That's coming after. Where are we going to get a burrito in Wisconsin? Hello? Is I there anybody from San Diego over here and get us a burrito? I think they're about to open the bar. <laughs> yeah. So well, I, that's I can fine. get you a drink. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's good. Okay, I, I, I drink mezcal and bourbon. <laughs> Boom. Not, not together, but yeah, <laughs> that's my drink. Just in case anybody else wants a podcast. There we go. <laughs> I work for burritos and bourbon. <laughs> We're gonna um, make you, we're gonna make you a shirt. Yeah, go <laughs> right. for it. Um, no, I mean I think you know you guys being able to ask yourselves like what are you on behalf of? What are you for the sake of? Is this part of that? You know, giving mm -hmm. access where people don't have access or creating access mm -hmm. um, using you know we you and I talked earlier about privilege. Yeah. And how do we acknowledge our privilege? Um, not to be ashamed of it or like sure. be like, sorry, 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 sorry. You know, it's like, that's not helpful. It doesn't connect us more, right? right? Mm -hmm. We're looking to, for the things m like to move the shit out of the way so that then we connect more. And, you know, I, I some somebody asked me this the other night, like, I feel like you're looking at me in like a really weird way or something yeah. like that, you know? Um, and and it, I said like, you know what, your gaze actually is really powerful. Mm. Like your ability to like hold someone in your gaze is very, very powerful. Mm. It, it impacts people and your ability to stay in that gaze mm -hmm. is a gift to people. It can also feel kind of like arresting or yeah. kind of like mm. violent too. Mm. So you have to be really careful that it's not like a weapon or it's not like... Right. I'm going to put this on you and then I'm going to, mm. you know, break you down or mm. whatever. Sure. That's a really dangerous place to go. Mm -hmm. But, um, but that if you really offer that to someone, it's a like, uh, very physical way of yeah. starting to create this connection of mm -hmm. saying like, you know, we need to figure out how to connect here mm -hmm. in order to solve our problems, whether it's global problems or whether it's gym problems, right? right? Like we got gym problems and we don't know how to solve them. Maybe when Mike <coughs> goes to Madison or whatever, like he'll f learn something that he's going to bring back and like, we're going to hack our problems, you know, yeah, but like, yeah. yeah, okay, good. There's great stuff to learn. You guys got seminars coming out your ears in this industry. Mm -hmm. um, but if you can figure out the ways to solve your problems that draw you closer together or right. closer to purpose, mm -hmm. then you're going somewhere. And that is worth being remembered for. Mm -hmm. That's huge. And as you've continued to evolve and grow personally and professionally, you know, <laughs> where have, uh, where, not, even, not even where have, how have you continued to find mentorship, you know, oh, at the level question. you are? Because, you know, speaking of Logan, it was just, 
being able to, and we use the word, to humble yourself to yeah. acknowledge that you don't have all the answers and how he reaches up to you mm -hmm. to help discover and, you know, yeah. embrace his weaknesses, as we call it, and find his strengths. How do you continue to do that in your life? So I'll edit one thing that you said. Okay. Um, and not out of, like, false humility, but that, like, you know, like, w now he reaches, like, over to me. Ah, which is cool. Okay, right? yeah, yeah. So there was a time when he would have reached up to me, but yeah. that he's done his own, you know, internal work yeah. about, that we all have to do mm -hmm. about people who we respect or we admire. Yeah. Or he's done the work of bringing me down into ordinary life. And sure. some of that has been my responsibility to change, you know, our dynamic to become, you know, become a real person and, um, and offer more and more of myself, which has required my own courage mm -hmm. to reveal more and more of my own need to grow, to be growing mm -hmm. and that I need others, you know, to show me a mirror and I need other people to <laughs> speak into my life and to encourage me. Mm -hmm. um, and so this pursuit that you're talking about, um, you know, this is not like a, easy craigslist ad like looking for developmental mentors <laughs> you know <laughs> could be virtual could be in san diego <laughs> you know, like it doesn't <laughs> not a thing yeah, right. um and i certainly have uh academic versions of this available to me mm -hmm. um and only two maybe three people have been able to do both things been really rigorous academically where I can really respect what they're doing. And it's, it's really, it pushes me to my edge, my learning edge, my complexity edge. Um, and they can show up in relationship to me that has this quality that we're talking about, whether right. it's empathy or whether it's, um, you know, we, we, we talk about it as like, yearning for one another's development right. as much as we yearn for our own development. <coughs> and those two people are um, Bill Torbert, who is a, used to be a Boston College professor. Um, I encountered him through some other fellowship academic stuff. Um, and he's got great theory. He's got great work. Um, he has a theory of leadership development, how leaders develop through different stages um, of awareness and how they hold their present moment awareness and also their big, like, over time perspective at closer and closer and closer together. So they have more and more timely moves in their leadership, right? Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't sure how he would show up. The more that I got to, like, be exposed to him, the more I realized he was showing up in integrity with the things that he was talking about, the theories that he was offering to explain the things he observed about leaders, about CEOs, you know, he, he did a lot of business study. Um, the other person is, uh, his name is Bob Keegan, and I worked for him at Harvard. I work with him now in some consulting capacities. So he's become an important person because while he's sort of like the godfather of like adult development mm -hmm. and his theory is fantastic and it's the most rigorous one with the most data over time, it's longitudinal, it's all the things you want to hear, blah, 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 mm -hmm. uh, that doing life with him or doing work with him is super meaningful. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I have a, a version of him that matches in a lot of ways, the things that he has observed and turned into theory and said, like, look, we're all constructing our reality here. Let's mm -hmm. just agree on that. And right. let's try to find each other, you know, knowing that, right? right. Like <coughs> I'm the narrator in my story and mm -hmm. like, you're the narrator in your story and like, you're the narrator in your story. Mm -hmm. Let's just try the impossible, which is to like somehow start to try to compare stories and get on the same page. It's right. virtually impossible. And what's required of my heart and what's required of my imagination and what's required of my intellect and my body in order to get somewhere with you. And so, mm -hmm. so those two men have done that really well. Um, and they are at least a generation or two older than me. So mm -hmm. I've had some distance with that. Um, I feel a little bit like a rebellious against the old institution thing. Like they're both white dudes, not by their choosing. Um, they're kind of older and they're Ivy league and they've got all this stuff built into them. So mm -hmm. 
more and more I have drilled into like the desire to have really like mutual relationships with people who are more peerly to me. Yeah. And it's way more challenging. Really? Mm. Yeah. Sure. So I have, you know, I have a map that's like a three dimensional. It's also like has a soundtrack going to it, like of my life of these relationships mm -hmm. where I've tried on the, like the mutuality and trying to come out with integrity, not like honesty, but I mean mm -hmm. like integrated, sure. like say who I say I am, who I want to be is mm -hmm. actually who I am when I show up mm -hmm. and the inconsistencies that I find when I try to do that. Mm -hmm. Sure that other people mirror to me, it's way harder when it's like a peer of mine. Mm -hmm. um, and that's super challenging. Um, so I would say now the mentors that I seek really are more like peers, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. people who can speak into my life in a different kind of way than a mentor would. Yeah. Right. Um, and we're, we're sort of like more for each other right. than like they're for me and they give me a lot of grace. They really want me to learn and mm -hmm. they think, right. But I'm like, oh, thank you, thank you. You know, it's more like, no, no, we're here to like deal with shit together. We're mm -hmm. here to do life together. So like, yeah. you know, Logan and I had a two-hour one of these yeah. like this morning over yeah. the coffee, and it's like, you know, we're back and forth and back and forth, and like the resistance is helpful, and the leverage is this, and the tension, and go back and rub and this. So um, those are the thing. Those are the relationships that I seek now, nice. and I alluded to a couple things that build those. One is. Um, my my transparent pursuit of being who I say I want to be, mm -hmm. that my actions would match my aspirations. Mm. Um, that is fucking hard. <laughs> 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 you laugh because you know. I know. Right? And the we thing, like... We just did the thing. The I, I know I you know. just <laughs> did the thing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's really tempting to get, like, sort of like a false self or, like, feel like an imposter. The act as if thing. Totally. And yeah. knowing, like, I'm showing up as this thing and everybody wants me to be this thing and everyone's invested in me being this thing. But, like, I'm the one that knows that, like, I'm not that thing. And, mm -hmm. like how long does this going to go on? And like, when do I get relief from this mm -hmm. rather than like really like doing the things to grow myself, to be the thing that I need to be mm -hmm. and figuring out how, how do I become okay with the space that I take up with the things that I need? Like I need to feel worthy and I need to feel loved. And these are really primary things. Mm -hmm. I need to feel encouraged and I need to feel purposeful and, you know, I'm afraid that I'm not interesting. And, you know, like, I got stories running, too, mm -hmm. you know. And I, um, so that integrity piece or the being integrated mm -hmm. yeah. piece is really big. And then the mutuality piece is really big, too. And that's sort of asking for that mm -hmm. is big. Wow. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, and I, c yeah. I could be off. But to me, I get your energy is that you're an extremely genuinely caring person and you deal with a lot of people mm. and you might absorb their energy and their mm. feelings and emotions. Is that a correct assumption? Is yeah, that's the, it's the temptation yeah. or it's sort of like the only way we think there is yeah. to do this kind of work, yeah. but it's a, it, w it's sort of like a, um, um, it's too permeable. Like that's mm. a unboundaried version of this. Uh -huh. Um, and it, and it creates like a drain on the, the practitioner or something, right. just like a coach, right? right? It's like, um, creating a boundary actually helps us yeah. keep the energy going and keep the okay. tension there. So yeah. it's like, um, like turgor pressure in a plant, uh -huh. you know, like you, you feed a plant water or whatever. It's like all the cells fill up and they push against each other and they look yeah. rather cramped and like boundary and stuff. Yeah. And it's like, it'd be nice if they could all flow around, you know, inside the leaves or whatever. But it's like, no, that doesn't work actually. They have to like be uptight again, you know, mm -hmm. against each other. And, um, and so that like, that helps mm. because if I, if I allow you to sort of just like mold into me, like I'm sunk. Mm -hmm. I am sunk. I can't carry you and Tim and me. Right. right? So developing the self-discipline oh. um, to boundary the work and to boundary the energy is really important. And uh -huh. this is where it starts to get into like this like kind of woo-woo thing, you know, uh -huh. like, 
our energy we have to bound it and like right. that kind of thing but um but you're right like it, you can carry that mm-hmm. and coaches carry that too and they burn out because right. of this mm-hmm. you carry your people and they're going through shit and now like you've got to be going through the shit because they are and the thing like i mean what so like What's the part of your question that yeah. you, yes, I have that. Okay. Yes, I don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> like, I want to stay healthy. I know that my staying healthy makes them better mm-hmm. because if I'm too permeable, they actually don't know, like, where they stand with me. Yeah. And they don't, they can't be sturdy because right. I'm not sturdy. Right. And so I can't let that happen or else people feel unsafe or like they don't they're insecure yeah. they're not sure and almost paranoid you know right if a leader does that yeah and so i try to hold the boundary steady you know see i, I love that you added context to that because that yeah. the question i was going to ask is yeah. how do you clear yourself yeah. of that energy okay if, it, yeah. if that were to happen you yes. know and yes. just set yourself back to balance yeah and stable it out so you can you know be present the next conversation you have with them yes okay that's a great question um. Yeah. Okay. So a couple ways. Number one, it has happened to me. Mm-hmm. Yes. Totally. Like any coach, I get the people, and I'm all wrapped up in the thing, and I'm super stressed, and I'm like all about them, and they, they, whatever. Um. And so yes, I've come to this. What? How do I do this? Mm-hmm. And um, I have a few answers. One, a couple of the part of them are regional. So like, I get in the ocean. That's one thing that I do. And um, I do that when I travel because I travel a lot and um, for work. And wherever I go, I try to, like, get into the water there. Mm. Um, I find that so that, you, like... you don't come to Arizona often? I know. I'm not really in Arizona very much. <laughs> hmm. Let me look on the map. Body of water oh, nowhere. There, 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 goes, there goes that coaching opportunity. <laughs> Get me a good <laughs> pool, man. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm a San Diego kid, yeah. right? And I've lived all over the country, but I've come back to San Diego, and this is part of it. And my office is, like, right by Seaside, which is, like, a great beach mm-hmm. for, you know, I just I walk out my door, I lock it up, like, walk around the corner and go get in the ocean. Um, that helps me a ton. Um, and part of part of what that's doing is giving me a feeling of like not w- like weightlessness mm. like not feeling the physical weight of like what's going on with a leader or what's going on with a system mm. or an organization and so um you know my f- the physical lightening of my load is happening in water sure so a lot has been written about water you know like mm-hmm. people follow my instagram see like i talk sometimes about that um, that's a practice that I have and that my clients like really respond to. They're like, what? Go on the water? Like, I don't understand or whatever. And I'm like, no, no, I'm serious. You go float. Now they have float tanks. Mm-hmm. Now people can like go do this in the dark, in the womb and the thing, like the float or whatever. Yeah, so it's like it. gotten really yeah. sophisticated. It's awesome. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. No, I just have a stinky wetsuit in the back of my office. I put it on, I go around the corner and I go in the ocean. I come back, <laughs> slick back my hair into the faucet and I get back on the phone, right? Or zoom or whatever. <laughs> Um, that's one thing. The other thing is that just like Logan has a coach, right? And people are sometimes surprised to hear that because they're like, dude, this guy's elite. Like he's a rock star. Like he has a coach. Why? Like Mm -hmm. he's killing it. Um, like I'm not a rock star and like, I don't have any of that, those accolades, but I know that I need a coach Mm -hmm. and I have several and they're shadowing me. And so what that does is a couple different things. One, it keeps me in check and it keeps in check this thing you're talking about which is the temptation to let somebody like stick on me Mm -hmm. and um and hold the paradox that like if i don't let the person stick on me or if i don't totally take them in that somehow i don't care about them or like it's not meaningful to me um i actually am much better like i'm much better in service of them when i don't allow them to like overtake me or get enmeshed with me right like i'm much better service if I'm sturdy and so I think uh you know my coaches help me check that they help me check my energy check my marriage check my physical you know uh state um and check my sleep you know all the things that I do for my clients like Mm -hmm. I'm asking my clients how's your relationship going how's your sleep going you know what's going on and um so 
So yeah, so the short answer to that is I love to get in the water. I think it's really good to like physically get the weight off of me. Mm -hmm. um, and I have shadow coaches who coach me up and know how my development is going. They know what's on like my map, the truths that I use to make decisions that are not true and that I need to unpack. Um, and then I also have relationships that are like of a non-ordinary quality and um and i would count my husband as one of those people he's like an insane partner mm -hmm. um like best thing i ever did was choose him as a partner he supports um you know my my gifts my you know pursuits um he sees the struggle and doesn't tempt me to quit you know like wow this is so hard why are you doing it like nothing none of that at all mm -hmm. so like we're sitting here at the top of a hotel in madison wisconsin and like he's in San Diego hanging out with my six and eight year old, you know, after camp and, you know, uh, one of my girls, one of my girls lost her tooth day before yesterday. No kidding. <laughs> and like, I usually write the tooth fairy notes. Like brother had to like get to the like handwriting of the tooth fairy to stay consistent <laughs> with like the tooth fairy thing. <laughs> like, oh, I'm sorry. You write in cursive, he writes in block. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, I was like texting him. I'm like, I know what you're saying right now. You're like, you just turn off the lights and everybody's in bed and there's a tooth under one of the pillows and you're like, Fuck. <laughs> 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 That's a trip. <laughs> <laughs> and so I fully picked the right partner because after we get off the phone, I'm going to show you the text, the picture I got of what he created to slip under their pillow. And um, like it just, it, it it brought me like to tears. Um, you know, so part my partner, choice of partner is huge. Um, and then relationships like, Cr the creative relationships that I have, like yeah. the one with Logan <coughs> and the one with the several other folks around the world mm -hmm. who um, who call me out to a bigger version of me yeah and um, and fight for me to create places and spaces where I can grow up mm -hmm. and um, wake up and become something more and um, understand like why I've been given breath you know I said that earlier but that's really like a breath prayer for me is mm -hmm. like you know breathing in like what am I being given like <sighs> like breathing out what am I giving and mm -hmm. um, I know that like I'm, I'm I've been given like everything I need to to give and um, so I depend on that you know, like I, I just, I believe in that mm -hmm. and I'm staking everything on that. I'm staking yeah. my career. I'm staking my livelihood, staking my relationships, um, all on that. Yeah. And this sort of like, like one go round here sure. that, uh, I'm going to extract all of the joy and meaning and quality that I can out of it. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to make that as possible as many times as I can. Um, so far it's like serving me very well. Yeah. It also gives me a lot of opportunities for reframing, for disconfirming evidence, mm -hmm. for failing, for heartbreak, for, you know, being really up close and personal to a lot of suffering yeah. that is really quiet suffering. It's not noisy suffering. It's really quiet, dark mm. suffering. The the suffering thing <coughs> we've had many conversations about the the hero's journey yeah, of this yeah. entrepreneurship thing yes, right yes and so much of what's out there in uh the recreational literature of personal growth and development mm -hmm. is the celebration of the suffering right and how much you know you appreciate what you have because of how much it sucked getting there yeah. and, and blah 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 and while i fi find that there's merit to that mm -hmm. for a lot of people that strive for better i don't mm -hmm. think there's an inherent value to that narrative and what i find for a lot of people that you know look up to to us to you yeah. to logan yep. in in these pursuits of something greater than themselves is they look for ways to sabotage their shit yes. so that the story sounds better so the suffering never goes away mm -hmm. yeah right. yeah 
I achieved this, but dude, I'm still suffering too. You know. Like, yeah. What 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 is what is okay. what is the thing about yeah, yeah. this that creates S- that makes it stick around? Yeah. It totally persists. Because there's enough shit out there now that you could completely bypass that if you really wanted to. Yes. Yes. You know. Okay. Um. A couple things. I think this is really exciting. Like part of the conversation. I'm sorry. So I'm sorry that it took us a half hour to get to no. this question. <laughs> you can edit out everything before now. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> We're coming to you from the CrossFit Games, Madison, Wisconsin. This is Karen Miller. <laughs> I'm here with Michael you, and Jeff. <laughs> you, you need your own podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> that was so on time. <laughs> caught me. You didn't have to buy me a drink and I got that. I came there. That was really good. Nice work. It was part of my plan. <laughs> no, uh, this is this is totally a thing. We get teased for saying that all the time, but like this is a thing. Uh, okay, I'm, so I'm, I'm counting. We've said it 57 times so far. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> the Ring thing. a bell every time I say it. <laughs> no. Um, so there's one concept that I'll offer you, and that will sound kind of academic-y, and then the other one's not going to at all. So the first one that's helpful for me is this French word called jouissance, and you can put it in the like notes or whatever because I don't want to try to spell it right now. <laughs> I'm going to have to Google it just to make sure I do it right. But, uh, but it's the the concept of uh, like really enjoying something or like feeling the ecstasy of something and um, and that psychologists recognize that there's a um, tendency to have this sort of sick form of jouissance about suffering and that like as long as we have this like sick enjoyment of the the suffering like my precious suffering like it makes it all worth it or it makes me like somehow I like I'm one of you or Mm. something like that um, that we never have to actually change break that like really claim our own enjoyment and our own like ecstasy and because those are dangerous states to be in and people who live in states of ecstasy and enjoyment and um, like even their suffering like they can contain because of the joy or the celebration that they have in their life. They're like fucking crazy artist people. Mm -hmm. They're people like, you know, performance artists stuff. Right. And, you know, we look at them and we're like, wow, they just have a whole nother thing going on. Or like, you know, I don't know. We make, we make judgments about people like that who live in ecstatic circumstances or seek ecstasy through, you know, different methods. Um, and that basically holds us back. It just, it, our, our clinging to the suffering holds us back Mm -hmm. and, um, it's, it's not helpful. Yeah. It is kind of sick and, um, but it keeps our stories in place and it protects us from having to make our old story bad and, uh, judge our sort of old self. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the opportunity is you've grown into something like you've achieved something or you've grown up in some regard and um and like you should feel bad about that a little bit like don't be too you know don't enjoy that too much um i don't i mean i i'm not totally sure where that comes from but it does protect from a full living into the new me and i think it's because the old me is threatened the old me f- the old me feels small Mm. when I do that and um, and feels judged and um, and so you know we talk about it in developmental language as like transcend and include right so that like you're not just skipping into this new thing like I was that but that is bad now and I'm a new better thing Um, it's like yes like I'm that old thing and I'm the new thing Mm. so you know I'm still, I'm still each of those things that got me there, you know? And, right. and, um, and so, so there's, there's those two parts of that is the inability to say what I went through is, is good and it's okay, but also I can like be beyond that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, um, you know, I'm not gonna lose credibility or I'm not gonna like come off the ground or something, you know, right. if I say, like I'm, I'm growing and I'm getting bigger and I'm mm-hmm. taking up more space, um, that that's okay to do. Um, 
there's there's definitely like a a pressure to like be small in the world and it shows up in like really weird ways like oops sorry oops excuse me sorry like people like on airplane I'm on an airplane a lot you know or people in line like oh sorry I didn't I didn't mean to oops excuse me like it's like you know what you just are the shape that you are you know like you just got to be in the space you know and like mm-hmm. when people give presentations I'll sometimes coach them and it's like people are really reluctant to be big yeah, yeah. and to take up their full space Great. and you know there's there's something scary about that yeah. about saying like I'm here mm-hmm. And I'm here to say something. Yeah. Also, I'm flawed and I'm afraid that all of you are going to figure that out or that somehow like I'm not what I say right. I am. And so I'm going to spend a lot of energy becoming small and mm-hmm. making sure that I'm like super protected before I ever risk anything. Uh, that's old survival stuff. That's old evolution stuff mm-hmm. when we actually did need that to survive. Mm-hmm. Like you needed to be small on the like terrain because you don't want a lion to see you and mistake you for like a gazelle because you can't run as fast as a gazelle and like you're sunk so we don't need those survival techniques anymore so we like make the psychological equivalent like lions are hunting me Mm -hmm. and i can't be me um i'm in survival mode so telling yourself like i'm already surviving here um my biological needs are met I am not in danger. Um, I'm what I'm really in danger from is my story limiting me Mm -hmm. and what I really want to go get to make my life meaningful. I'm going to be the one that will prevent myself from getting it. Yeah. That's not motivational talk. Mm -hmm. That's a psychological resistance to doing it because it requires something of you. It requires you to take up space. It requires you to say what you need. It requires you to say, I want to be loved and I want to be meaningful and I want to have an impact and I want to be okay about that. Um, we know that that's what humans want. We want to feel worthy and remembered. And how do we normalize that and figure out a way to get that with humility and to make that thing connect us to each other? Yeah. So, yeah, I think the suffering is like... <sighs> if it's useful to take you somewhere like that increases connection or to pull you out for a while. I mean, you know, a part of my story is I'm a cancer survivor and I had to be in isolation because I was, you know, I had radiation and like a bunch of stuff. Well, you know, that was a place of suffering for me and I've had to figure out how to use that suffering and like learn from it and have it draw me towards people. Um, rather than having it continue to exist in the same way. Mm -hmm. I had to like figure out how to transform that thing Mm -hmm. and um, not ignore it or get past it, (laughs) right? Like I have that right now. Right now I have the suffering of being isolated or being in the dark or you don't know if you're going to, you know, how what who holds your life. You know, like I I have that. (sighs) That's in me. Um, So I don't need to get rid of that. Mm -hmm. But like, I have grown above that, like not above it. I've grown beyond that or mm. like I've grown around that Yeah, is a better way to say it. Yeah. So I've grown around it and we each have like pieces of these things. Mm. So your suffering is, is great. <laughs> it's like a very useful softener and toughener and like all those things. Um, as long as we're willing to like grow around it, sure. not disown it right. or s- really celebrate it and let it mm-hmm. become our banner of connection. We mm-hmm. just have so many other forms of connection yeah. than mm-hmm. suffering. Like mm-hmm. now all of that to say, I see suffering in the world and I see power used in ways that ca- that perpetuate suffering. And that's very real. Mm-hmm. And like, as far as it depends on me with my power in the world and the way that I parent my children and in my neighborhood and the places that I go and speak and, I, and the role I have in my community. Um, like that I'm like, like I stand against that, right? right. Like I'm, I'm, I'm fighting suffering on that kind of a scale. Sure. But this kind of suffering that you're talking about is of a totally different quality. It's like yeah. made up suffering mm. or something, right? It's sure. like, oh, it's my justification. Self-imposed. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Okay, you, so you, I just you, talked you, for a long ass no, time. No, like, no, well, no, you got me beautiful. on a like thing. I'm like, whoa. Yeah, but I mean, the the suffering <laughs> that you're you're combating in the world versus the the self imposed, the chosen, 
suffering mm-hmm. that that people place upon themselves um it in in my mind's eye suffocates the growth that you're actually looking for right while you're seeking a better story because maybe you come from privilege and the the struggle mm. wasn't as real right you know <coughs> i saw it in a lot of football teams that i played for uh in that um you have the kid who's hungry comes from nothing and like yep needs to go to the league to get out of where he came from right and then you got the kid who's of who's cut from the the uh who's the the white kid from Stanford who plays running back for Carolina now? McCaffrey, mm-hmm. right? Dad played in the pros. Mom was a D1 athlete, mm-hmm. had everything. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I'm, in, I'm at Stanford. Yeah. The path is driven, yeah. you know? Like, there are kids like that who come from legacy who sabotage that shit. Mm-hmm. To what end? Mm. Because... You're competing for the same position for this kid who has more motivation. Uh-huh. It's not that he has more. It's just different. You know, Are you saying that you don't want to go to the NFL? Because if you've already identified that, that's a totally different thing. But it has a- it's completely well, absent that effort. Something that athletes definitely have, like my experience in coaching elite athletes, which I, d- I do that some of that. Sure. Um, is their you know difficulty around identity mm-hmm. and when their physical performance changes you know how that how, what happens to their identity in that and that yeah. their physical suffering to be the the athlete or the elite performer um like they have to come up with a substitute for that thing mm-hmm. um because that is the mantra of athletics is like you got to earn it like no pain no gain like push it to the max and all this stuff like, like um and so well, how, how do i do that you know in this other life um is a really like sort of unfair setup yeah mm-hmm. and um and so yeah i think people people like you're describing um you know might also you know feel like hey you don't know what it took to get here you know like i now i gotta make something up i mean i think that's what you're going to sure, with, right yeah. yeah like oh you think i just got given this no like i i really suffered you know it's like it's my ticket but at the risk of sounding like a broken record like suffering is just not a very valuable ticket mm. right like it's not the kind of like the kind of connection the kind of currency that that is like when i give you that and like mm. what you give me back for that like the exchange rate is just low right mm. like it doesn't connect us like who do you feel like yeah we're really about the struggle you know like we're like so much intimacy in the struggle it's like it doesn't feel like that mm. it actually feels like it excuses you from doing something a real, like connecting in a real yeah. way, mm. like who I want to be or who I need to be or something, you know? Yeah. I, I, in, I think that that brings us back to the, the exercise that we started with and that, yes. that yucky dialogue yeah. and that, that narrative is constructed in such a way that nobody would hold you at fault for failing. Exactly. Yep. Right. Yes. Is that, is that how it goes? Yes. Okay. Nobody would blame you because so <laughs> much is against you. Mm-hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. of course, your story is of struggle and like everything's against you, you know. So it gives us the The out. out. Yeah, Yeah, for Mm -hmm. sure. And it excuses us from a life that is like where everything's waiting for us. Mm. Like all the connection is there. And oftentimes when people like come up against that experience or that realization, um, they like they cry and that i mean you said that to me earlier you know like i feel like i was about to cry and i'm like who is this person you know like and i'm about to cry and this is just an exercise and like what's <laughs> going on you know and i really think the cr- like that the physical act of like crying in that setting is like a relief oh for sure a total mm-hmm. like relief like whoa like someone is gonna let me lay this like struggle down yeah. of yeah. managing who I am in the world and who I have to be, who I want to be, how to like, or against who I don't want to be, yeah. who I cannot be. Um, they're actually gonna let me, you know, discover like what is me mm. and what my offering is and what the level of connection is that's possible. 
um, because there's so many layers of like connection possible. Yeah. Like, mm. I think it's like our only hope of like <laughs> figuring out how we solve like really gnarly problems that are like ingrained and just like imp- imprinted now, you know, in all of our societies. Mm-hmm. It's like, how do we figure out how to like reconnect with one another? That is not a silly, like, ideal type pursuit like that's a very real thing yeah if you can find the level of connection that's meaningful that's risky that moves the needle that gives you the opportunity to make the changes that you need to make for your community or enables you to get sturdy enough so that people can push against you and make the changes that they need to make right like that's a real thing Mm -hmm. that's an impact and we can like map that shit (laughs) um and you know, so as a developmentalist, I know like the waterline on what we're able to think and do and how much complexity we can realize, how much connectedness we can understand, you know, like as that waterline rises, like all boats rise, you know, like the whole thing goes with that. And so, you know, like pushing the tide is a worthwhile endeavor um, because everyone benefits from it. Um, yeah. That's amazing. At this point of where you stand in your life currently, how would you define your life's purpose as you see it right now? I think my life's purpose is to be on purpose. Mm. And that that covers all of the achievements or all the like pursuits the small things um and i think being on purpose for me is a really um it's a like state of being so um i want to be as on purpose more of the time in real time as possible so i pull up and out of that space you know with differing uh, rhythms. And so I'm in pursuit of the processes and like the practices and the disciplines, physical disciplines and mental disciplines, spiritual disciplines and disciplines of relationship that get me closer to that so that I can say like more and more, I am on purpose, I'm speaking on purpose, I'm parenting on purpose, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Um, And as far as the expression of that in the world, um, it's to be a companion to people who are discovering how to do that. Mm. Um, the way that I like market that is as being a coach. It's been as being a professor. It's been as being a consultant, right? Like these are words that people understand. Um, and those are the credentials that earn me the right to be heard. Um, once I show up, And they trust my credentials and they see that I'm on purpose and that I'm trustworthy to be a companion for them to risk actually developing or going against the patterns that they see in the world. Um, Then my distinction is that I get to be a lot of fun. Mm. So like this podcast and a lot of my podcasts end up taking me to a really serious place because we're talking about really meaningful things. Um, But I think my distinction is that I am really like fun and like a little bit offbeat and um that i am pretty casual Mm -hmm. and um yeah that i have an ability to you know you called it empathy but i think it's an ability to connect with people and um part of that is physical and part of that is spiritual that like i um i know the power of my gaze and i know the power of like physically like turning my heart towards you or towards you Um, and I know like, you know, this, maybe this gets into some other podcast, but like, I know the power of like my beauty and of my gender and, um, and of my privilege and, um, and of my like spiritual gifts. Mm. And so, um, those aren't esoteric things to me. Those are like very real things. That's how I touch the world. And that's how like people touch me. So, um, yeah, so that's. That's my expression of it in the world. I love that. 
So before we let you get out of here today, <laughs> let, <laughs> no, I really do need a drink. <laughs> let, let, let you off the hook. Were you expecting to get this deep? Yes, I live here. Oh, beautiful. I mean, I was hoping that you would, right? <laughs> I told you that before here. Don't ask me the other question. Ask me the question. Oh, you yeah. Know? Like, yeah. So I have two more the questions. Yeah, for okay. You, yes. But they're about you. They're not okay. the out here in the ether. Okay. Answer them on any level, mental, physical, spiritual. Okay. Wh whatever touches you okay. right now. Okay, yeah. Um, the first of which, and I'll ask them in succession, and then you can answer. Okay. The first of which... Uh, what do you do each and every day to feed yourself and allow you the energy to do what you do and do it well? And the follow on to that is what do you do each and every day to fuel yourself and cr make sure that that momentum is sustainable over, long, over the long term? <sighs> Title of the podcast. We're going to bring it home. Nobody um, gets that. She killed right it. Right there. <laughs> right there. Hiding in plain sight. I don't know how the elephant fits, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll explain it over beer. Right? Okay. Right. Yes. Bourbon. Okay. Bourbon. Bourbon. Um, okay. So what I do every day to feed myself. Mm -hmm. Yes? Um, the more physical answer is... I do think about what I feed myself. I do think about like what I eat and what I drink. And um, sometimes people ask me about that because it's sort of like an easier technical thing to talk about, especially people in your industry. Like, so what are you like keto or what, you know? And, um, and so, yeah, like I drink bulletproof coffee and I actually really like believe in the neuroscience between, you know, behind the thing and the whatever. Yes. So I'm paying attention to what I feed my body and how my brain works and like, how fast I am and those kinds of things. Um, I'm not an elite performance athlete, but, um, but I do try to pay attention to my body mm -hmm. and that's a discipline. So um, I do things like scan my body in the morning and I scan it in the evening to figure out what's going on and where am I and what's wonky and mm -hmm. like what feels really good and what can I sort of celebrate and all those things. Um, spiritually, I do something similar and in some traditions, they call it the examine, uh, which is in the morning, um, I think about, you know, what times of the day I will feel near to like spirit or source. Mm -hmm. And they call that consolation. So where will I feel consoled by my closeness or nearness to my purpose or source or God, um, you know, to the spirit that really like breathes in me. And um, at the end of the day, asking myself, like, where was I far from that? Mm. And they call that desolation, where, like, it was pretty desolate. Like, I was at a place of low fuel and feeding and um, distance from the spirit, from the source, uh, from the groundwater. And um, so the consolation, desolation thing, like nearness or, f or distance, farness, um, that's a spiritual discipline that I... Um, try to do as often as possible. Mm. Um, as far as my um, intellectual pursuits, the way that I feed my intellect or my intelligence, uh, my logic is um, I am a voracious reader. I know old people who read, um, like they're just different kinds of people and who read things that they don't already agree with. They're like a different sort of person and I love them. So uh, it's my aspiration to be an old person who reads things that they don't agree with. So mm. I'm starting now. Um, I read just basically everything. And um, I'm actually reading a book right now. Maybe I'll show it to you because it's, it's sort of like what I stand for and I'd never heard of it before. And I just was in Maine at this random old bookstore. What have you changed your mind about? It's a collection of people who have, like, s have super expertise in their thing. Uh, and somehow they figured out a way to change their mind about it. Mm -hmm. Something fundamental to who they are, to what they've built, what they've achieved. Yeah. So it's basically like, how do you like break your frame or hack yourself? Mm. I want to do that all the time. So um, I'm always reading. Um, and uh, in relationships, I try to be as transparent about what I need or what I'm afraid of or what I feel like is at stake as possible. And um, I'm not very good at this. 
So um, I want to feel more nourishment from like the relationships that I'm in. I'm really good at nourishing relationships and I'm not very good at like receiving nourishment or asking for nourishment the way that I need it or want it. Mm. Um, I have a really, really deep desire for that, for the intimacy of that. Um, but like on my you know, map of the, my improvement goal thing. Um, I do a lot of things like to subvert this desire. So mm. that's my thing on that. Um, and then what do I do to fuel my, what was, that was the second part? Sustainable energy. Okay. Sustainable energy. Uh, Ooh, that's, I'm, I protect my sleep. That's an important one. Um, I've been through a season of parenting where like it, you can't do that. And I'm into a season of parenting now. You'll get there at some point. I promise <laughs> it's coming for you where you can protect your sleep, you know? And, um, I do that for my children to protect their sleep. I protect my sleep. I know what it does for your brain and for, uh, how much is going on in you in mm -hmm. the night. And so, um, that would be my more technical answer. Um, but yeah, to fuel, um, say it again. What do you do to feel yourself to create the sustainable energy? The sustainable over energy over okay, the long yes. term. Um, I mean, this is an interesting question for me because I don't think I've thought of that as well as I like have needed to. I mean, I I haven't needed to until now ish. So. Like I turned 40 this year and it's given me like this whole other understanding of like, wow, I have to actually like conserve some of this. Cause like, it's, I can't just like run it out. Um, so that's true. Like spiritually mm -hmm. and physically, um, the boundaries thing that I talked towards you about, <laughs> um, is part of this and, um, and also like opening up those boundaries is another way. So, I talk a lot about how much energy can you like elicit from the people that you work with and how much energy are you going to carry the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And that's a really hard balance to strike, but like people are available to energize you in a lot of different ways. So you saw me, you know, in a seminar setting and you know, I'm there like as the coach or as a subject matter expert and you know, you and I got into it, like, but there's other things going on there, right? And, um, and like, yeah, you're right. There's a lot of other things going on there. Like, I'm sitting in there holding the room. I'm sitting in there reading the dynamic. I'm sitting in there watching Logan and, like, pushing pushing energy towards him or staying in his head or, you know, whatever. And, um, and so, you know, his ability or my ability to enroll other people in the reality that, that like, all that's going on at once mm -hmm. is um, a deep well of energy mm -hmm. that most people are not using same is true for any physical coach right like if you stand up there and you're like this whole thing is on me right um like you will burn out so you got to figure out that like you've got people here who are full of energy how do you enlist them and enroll them and invite them to own this thing and this goes all the way back to that academic thing which mm -hmm. is in my classroom you know like we're going to build the syllabus together because if we do that, like you are way more likely to learn better, author your way through it, own the thing. And so, um, you know, if my children help cook the dinner, like they just eat it. Like it's so interesting because like they have an investment in it and they think mm -hmm. it's cool and they want to like do, you know, own it. Um, so that's true about sort of all work, whether it's in a CrossFit seminar like we had or whether it's in a professional training setting or a coaching setting. Like, mm -hmm. I am not doing something to you. Like, we're doing this thing. And mm -hmm. so the energy is going to come both ways. And I need you. Mm -hmm. I need you to, like, fuel that. Um, we'll go way different places if you're here with me. And um, so I, I'm learning that, like, I need that as fuel. Mm -hmm. um, and I can claim that and... And some people don't want to do that. Right. Some people really do need, like, I'm ready for answers. I'm ready for direction. I'm ready for prescription. Um, 
that's everywhere. You can get that on the internet. There's lots of coaches that will give you that. They'll just sit mm-hmm. you down and they will just school you. The technical. Totally, the yeah. technical. If you want to go into adaptation mode or if you want to understand how your brain really works, if yeah. you want to understand neuroplasticity and you want to understand how to build that shit, then we are going to have a conversation because mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you what to eat in order to achieve that. I'm going to tell you how to think in order to achieve that. I'm going to tell you who you need to enlist and get around you in order to achieve that. I'm going to tell you about the darkness that's going to come and the like developmental sort of like depression that's going to come when you realize that like that life is over and you experience a small death and you have to figure out how to grieve that and like turn around and like go again it's like die to live another day you know like it's not a John claude Van Damme thing but like it's that's a reality and so like I'm that's where I'm working mm-hmm. and um, and I think you know the more that I realize that like I haven't been accessible to the world um, and that like it's sort of on me to figure out how to open up and like get out there, um, you know, writing a book or creating a podcast. I mean, you just said that right here, right? Um, or, you know, writing some the making things available, making myself available. This is part of it. Sure. That that will be really great fuel for me. Um, but I haven't yet known how to do that. Got mm. it. So... And where can everybody in this community go follow you and support you, both personally and professionally? I'm on Instagram at Developmental Coach. And uh, I'm in the process of changing my website um, in order to reflect these, like, changes in awareness and values around me. So I'm, you know, creating a website that removes obstacles (laughs) and removes stereotypes starts to like break them down um, and uh, makes my perspective more accessible and makes me as a person more acce- accessible um, because I think that's that's what's being called forth from me. So I'm working hard on that. Mm-hmm. Um, that website right now is inquiryp.com. My company's called Inquiry Partners. Um, I'm really focused on the inquiry pursuit. I'm curious. Mm-hmm. I'm questioning constantly. And, um, and I invite my clients and my friends and my students to that pursuit. Um, and that's where the partnership comes from. Uh, so I'm all about inquiry and I want to do that in partnership. So brand people tell me I should call myself the brain hacker or whatever, (laughs) right? (laughs) But now you know why I don't want that title. Yeah. The title I want is inquiry partner. Yeah. So like we're in the pursuit here. Like inquiry is an ongoing thing. It's a it's a practice. It's a value, and that we're partners in the thing. Yeah. Like we need each other in the thing, and that's how we're gonna get the things we want, which is intimacy, right. meaning, <coughs> connection, impact, power, and that it's all like vulnerability, humility, all the things we say and we don't know what they feel like or they taste like. Yeah. That's the pursuit. So inquiry partners at inquiry. It's inquiryp.com and um, at developmental coach is the role that I associate myself with most. Cool. Love it. Cool. Yep. Well, everybody out there in feed me, fuel me land, make sure you hop online and check out inquiry partners and uh, at developmental coach. Um, follow everything that mm. coach Kara is up to and, uh, we really appreciate yeah, you so sharing you. your Thanks space you with us and being so authentic uh, in you know in such impromptu fashion. I know that you got a lot going on. You you got here for different reasons, but now you're here with us sharing, yeah. um, and it it really means a lot. So thank you so much. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, until next time, guys. Feed me, fuel me. <laughs>